Hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. Terry Coomer and this is the Hope Biblical Counseling Center Ministries broadcast. We're glad you're listening today and we've been very thankful to see how uh, the YouTube channel has worked and all the comments that we've received and also the blessings that have been brought forth and the people who've been helped. So today what we want to talk about is... Um, we want to talk about we must learn why we must learn to deal with our lusts. And ladies and gentlemen, I think this is the one of the biggest subjects today that we have to deal with in our lives, and we deal with it in our counseling program here with every person that comes into it. Our greatest desire is that you would be encouraged uh, in the Lord today and in my you know, as we think about the different things that God speaks to us about through his word, uh, the Holy Spirit continues to bring this issue up to me to be able to be a help during this time of the COVID virus, and also just in general, because I, I think this is the biggest subject of biblical long-term change, and yet it's the most neglected by Christians. This causes great destruction in the lives of Christians and is the, the real cause behind spiritual rebellion. Uh, and sadly, it is the subject that most Christians do not understand uh, biblically. And the Bible is very plain about this. The word lust, lusts, uh, lusting, and lusteth is used more than 50 times in the Bible. And whenever God wants to make a point in the Bible, he repeats it. So this must be and uh, is extremely important. In James chapter 4 and verse 1, the Bible says, From whence come wars and fightings among you? And I'd encourage you to have your Bible uh, and uh, read along with us in James chapter 4. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts, that war in your members? Verse 2, ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And do you think the Spirit saith in vain, the Spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Now, that's the first part. The last part, verse 6, is, is starting into the help part. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace, divine help, unto the humble. Now submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Now, you know, the uh, in verse 10, or verse 9, it says, Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep, and let your laughter be turned into mourning, uh, or to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. How about that? When we biblically counsel people, okay, and that's what this channel is about, it's biblical counseling, and and I think it's one of the subjects that, you know, many times uh, I've heard people say, well, if they can't get it from the pulpit, they can't get it. Honestly, I, you know, I understand that line of thinking, but when we're dealing with lusts, uh, you know, it's going to take a little more work than that. It's going to take some one-on-one -on -one work to be able to deal with it and, uh, and, and, you know, to help people understand exactly where their lusts are. So when we biblically counsel people, they come to us because their marriage, uh, their children, or their life is falling apart because of their lusts. Uh, they've lost their they are uh, they've lost hope, and they are fighting. They're warring. They're deceiving. They're lying. They're rebellious, and many times they're involved in immorality, and their life is in total destructive mode. Yet, they don't understand why that they're that way. Yet, their life is a mess. And their life is nowhere near honoring and glorifying God, yet they profess to be saved. 
Now, many times they're ready to divorce and lives are being destroyed. They're rebels to authority and they are destructive and prideful people. So what's the problem? Well, in James chapter 4 and verse 1, so anybody that comes in for marriage counseling, ladies and gentlemen, uh, generally they're warring and fighting, okay? And so here it comes. Here's the answer. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence? Now listen, even of your lusts, that war in your members. Do you notice lust is plural? That means more than one. And James is speaking to Christians here. He's not speaking lost people. Why are they fighting? And, you know, after all these years of biblical counseling, you know, uh, I mean, uh, we find that within the church today, uh, we're doing a lot of things that encourage people to live for their lusts. But we're not specifically working uh, on their lusts. And we may tell them to, you know, you know, we may preach and the Holy Spirit speaks to them and they come forward in a service and, you know, and they ask God to forgive them. And 24 hours later, they're doing the same thing. And the next week, the pastor preaches again. They get into conviction, same thing. And, you know, after a while, uh, they continue to go right. I mean, you know, 24, 48 hours later, doing the same thing again. Nothing changes. And they're defeated because they don't understand that, yes, uh, when we come, as 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and we can thank God for that. However, you know, it doesn't stop there. We have to make, we have to find out what the lust is, and then we have to deal with it biblically. Otherwise, we're going to be warring and fighting and doing all these things that I was talking about. And it's a pattern that goes on and on and on in many, many people's lives. And because of the lusts that war in their members. So the Bible says. Now, did you notice that lust is plural, more, meaning more than one? So when people think about lust, they generally think about moral sin. However, the Bible has at least 82 different lusts across a wide spectrum that a person can have in their lives. Uh, the problem is our lusts. Many times people come in for counseling and they talk about the symptom, not the cause of the symptom. They think the problem is on one side and really what's happening here, okay, the problems, they think the problem's over here when really the problem is over here because of their lusts. And the lust over here is driving what's going on over here. Now, uh, the lust that's driving their life. Now, I'm, I want to ask you a question here. I want you to think with me now. What's the will of God for your life? Now, you know, as a pastor for all these years, I've had all kinds of people talk about the will of God, wanting to know the will of God. Well, let me, let me show you biblically. Now, follow along, and if you got your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians 6 and look at verse 9, 19. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? Now, the moment you ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins and come into your heart and be your Savior, the Holy Spirit came to indwell you. And just for the purpose of this broadcast, let me explain something to you. The Bible tells us that, that, that there are at least 70 different things that the Holy Spirit does in our life. 70. And so consequently here, the Holy Spirit now comes to indwell us. And so that gives us power that we didn't have before as lost people. And lost people don't have this power. And the reason why a lost person, they'll, they live from lust to lust to lust to lust. And the reason why they're not doing this lust over here is because they're distracted by this lust over here. Okay. And so they'll move from here back to here, over to here, over there, over here, all of that. Okay. And so lost persons, lost people live for their lust to lust to lust to lust. Now, as a believer, you know how the power to change that. 
Now, because the Holy Spirit is living within you. Now, listen carefully. What? Know ye not. And when the Apostle Paul says, know ye not, they don't know. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, if you're saved, which you have of God, and you're not your own. Ladies and gentlemen, big problem right there. We live today like that we are our own as a Christian. Now, verse 20 says, For you're bought with a price, and that price is the blood of Christ. For you're bought with a price, therefore glorify God. Now, this is God's will for your life. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, many times, you know, people don't have as much trouble with this body thing as they do with spiritual sins, you know, sins of the spirit. Now, we're to glorify God. In our life. Now, if you're struggling in your life today, and if you were in my office, I would ask you this question. Has your behavior been honoring and glorifying to God? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want anybody to ever leave my office without having hope in their life. God wants you to have hope in your life. But has your behavior been honoring and glorifying to God? Now, you know the answer to that question. And the will of God for you is to glorify God with your life. You cannot do that if you're living for your lusts. So I ask our counselees, is your behavior been, has your behavior been glorifying to God? And the answer is always no. Why? Because they're living for their lust and they don't understand they are and why they are. Now in James chapter 4 verse 2 it says and 3, listen to this, ye lust. Now I don't know how much plainer you can get than that. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight more, yet ye have not because ye ask not. And look at verse 3. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss, get it now, that you may consume it upon your lust. So in essence, your lust now affect your prayer life. And there's all kinds of people out here today who are praying and they're praying for their lusts and they don't even know it. And they profess to be Christians. So here's the average Christian who lives for their lust, and they do not see answers to prayer because they are praying for their own lusts. And, you know, that's really selfish. That's pretty selfish stuff. That's carnal. That's what it is. And, what's, and this selfishness means carnal. Yet they do not understand why that God doesn't answer their prayers. So what does God call this, ladies and gentlemen? In James chapter 4 and verse 4, it says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, now, so he's saying that people who are saved, who live for their lusts, are spiritual adulterers and spiritual adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity, it's meaning hatred and, and, and that kind of thing, with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world, now listen, so in essence, living for your lusts, and you know, we hear pastors all the time say, don't live a worldly life. What's that mean? Well, it means you're living, you know, whether they would understand all that or not, but, you know, it, it, don't live a worldly life. We understand, we hear that, that we think about certain things, but listen to this. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Now remember, he's talking to saved people here. So here's a person who is professing to be saved, living for their lusts. Now the Bible here says they're the enemy of God. Now, I don't want to be that, and I, I don't think you want to be that. So God calls these Christians spiritual adulterers and adulteresses. So friendship of the world, 
So living for your lust is being a friend of the world and the enemy of God. And that's pretty serious stuff. This is the main, listen to me, this is the main cause of people with anger issues, rebellious issues, bitterness issues, and a, no, and a whole slew of other issues. Now, the question is here, who, who and what is behind it? So let's see what God's Word says. In James chapter 4 and verse 6, it says, and verse 7 too as well, but he giveth more grace. That means divine help. Grace means divine help. Wherefore he saith, God, listen carefully, God resisteth the proud. Wow. So what's behind all this then? Pride. But God, but giveth grace, divine help, unto the humble, or the submitted. Now, verse 7 has a very important word, the first word in it, submit. Now, if I ask Christians, what does it mean to submit to God? I would get buku answers, and none of them be right. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. So now we see that pride is involved. Now we see that pride is involved. And we also see that um, we also see that there is other things involved, um, and that who else is involved is the devil. So he is behind you, living for your lust through your pride. Now, so we see a person who's living for their lusts because they believe that they can live independently from God. Now, you know, you can be in church, and you can be um, going every Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, which you should do. But, you know, you can live your life self-righteously, proud, and think that you're serving God just because of what you do, not because of who you are. And, and, you know, that's getting the cart before the horse. It's who you are that matters here. And, you know, are you a person who's living for your lusts through your pride and your arrogance of being independent from God, even though you might go to church three times a week? You might even read your Bible. But the question is, even when you read your Bible, and if I said to you, how many times have you read down a chapter and when you got done, you didn't even know what you read. Now, you know that. Now, and you think you really had a, a, a time with God. Now, there's other help on our on the channel here about how to have a real, intimate, personal, and passionate relationship with God. And I would encourage you to take a look at that. So, but that's a different subject right now from what we're dealing with. So the devil's behind it, and Satan is a deceiver. He's a deceiver, and someone who lives for their lusts, listen carefully to me, lives a deceptive life. Many of the people that we counsel are deeply involved in deception. They're deceiving themselves, and generally, they're deceiving others, whether that be their wife, whether that be their husband, whether that be, you know, uh, the authority figures in their life. They deceive themselves and others. Now, and so what's the answer here? In James chapter 4, verse 7, the Bible says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Now, what does it mean? What's it mean to submit yourself? Well, you know, that mean, that, that, there's a point where I have to come to a place that I realize that I'm going to have to ask God questions. Okay? Uh, as an example, every day when I open my Bible, I ask God the Holy Spirit, to teach me today. Show me what your message is for me today. Make it real to my heart. And as I'm reading down, and I've got a notebook where I'm writing down different things, you know, my God's message for me today. And uh, so I write that down. And, you know, and I sit there and I meditate upon that. And think about that. I look for promises from God. I look for commands from God. I look for principles that are good in the Old Testament and the New Testament, and I write those down. And so when I come to a passage, you know, when I'm reading along, and the Holy Spirit says, write down. 
And I read that passage and it really speaks to my heart. Think about this. The God of the universe is actually teaching me. He'll teach you if you ask him. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. The essence of the Christian life is to ask God questions. And so, uh, and you know, if I'm asking God a question, you know, many people think that their prayer life is such that, and we're going to discuss prayer life and things like that. And that's also in the, uh, the video on how to have a real relationship with God. But, you know, many people think that when they're praying, they should tell God what to do rather than ask him what he wants you to do. Now, so verse 7, submit yourselves therefore to God. Uh, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Draw an eye to God and he'll draw an eye to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. And by the way, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So a person who lives for their lusts, professes to be a Christian, is a double-minded man or woman. So humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Now, Let's think about this. Submit yourself to God. We, we got a very useful tool that we call the change sheet. And it lists all 82 of the lusts in the Bible. And on a scale of 0 to 10, 0 being it's not a problem, 7 through 10 being it is a problem, which is a demand lust, Ephesians 2, 3, it's a desire of the mind, which means it controls behavior. Now, so we ask people to evaluate themselves, being honest, and we find out where we need to go in their life with God's word. We skillfully use God's word to pick off each lust. We ask the person to read the passages of scripture on the subject, write things down that they learn from that, and then also to memorize it and, and meditate upon it. Let the verses start, start to get into your mind. Submit yourself to God by asking him questions about your lust, about the verse. Which, watch, watch what the Bible says. How do you renew your mind? Romans 12, 1 and 2 says this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. As the person submits to God, and reads and meditates on the verses that deal with their lusts, gradually their mind is changed to God's mind on that subject. God's word has the answer for your lusts. And by the way, that's something that you can do with your children. You know, um, I did that with mine. And, uh, you know, we would go for rides and we would talk. And here's what I want you to understand. Uh, if your child is... You know, uh, you're talking with your child and your child says something that you don't agree with. Now, you have an opportunity to teach here. You have an opportunity to be angry here. Now, if you come across and say, now, listen, you know better than that. I don't ever, ever hear you say that again. What have you just done? You've, they're not going to tell you anymore. They've st you've stifled communication. And one of the areas that is very important for you in doing that is to communicate with your child. And so one of the things that I would ask my children to do is to uh, you know, find a verse about that subject or a couple, two or three verses. And they come back the next week and we talk about that. And I'd say, now, I want you to realize, okay? And, and I would say, well, now, what do you think God thinks about that? And so well, I didn't really realize what God thought about that. You see, here's an opportunity to teach rather than jump down their throat. Because you jump down their throat, you're going to stifle communication and you're not going to get them to communicate to you and therefore their lusts are going to get bigger rather than smaller and, and, and rather than dealing with it. And I think it's so important for you to take that opportunity not to do that and to focus in on how you're going to be able to help them uh, with their lusts. And and one of the things, ladies and gentlemen, is this. You only got this child in your home 18, 19 years. You know what? They're going to go out of your home, and if you've not taught them how to deal with their lusts, 
they're going to spiritually fail. And they're going to live a life that's going to be a shell of what a Christian really needs to be rather than, and you know, many times, you know, I've had, I've had people, you know, in the last 30 years who have asked me this question when I go to preach in a church and when I talk about these types of subjects and they say, I do not understand. My child uh, grew up in this church and they went to this Christian school or they were homeschooled and now they're living like the devil, and I do not understand that. Well, I've just talked about that for you. And you have to learn about dealing with lusts, and then you have to convey that to little Billy and little Susie. Because if you don't, they're going to walk out of your house and either live a life of, of uh, just being a self-righteous Christian or living a life of being a real Christian. One of the two, or an unrighteous person, you know. Finally, folks, this is the essence of spiritual growth and biblical long-term change in your life. Now, don't underestimate what we're talking about here. It's life-changing if you apply it. And we got a lot of tools, and, uh, you know, we have a, a booklet called uh, How to Deal with Worry, Anxiety, and Fear. It has the change sheet in the back of it. Now, if you're getting emails from us, then... You can order that and uh, through our website. And we are in the process of putting together a new website and making a lot of changes to that. And, and uh, so it's going to be back up soon. It, we, the current website is fine. You can, uh, you know, it has a lot of great help on it, but we're, we're making it better. And so I do want you to remember this as we close today. Be the vessel that God can use today. By asking the Holy Spirit to show you if you're living your life not dealing with your lusts. Are you living in this are you living in the sin of allowing selfish carnal thinking or listening to rule your life and making you react or rationalize your sin? Be all that you can be for him today and have a powerful testimony of living a spirit controlled, yielded, godly life that is serving and living with humility joy, and peace. I want to encourage you today to make Jesus Christ real in your life by humbly yielding to him at the point of impact every day and different times during the day and living for him, not the life of selfish carnal thinking and speaking. It's an important choice. Tell God you want to yield yourself to him today and be a trusting, useful, and rewarded servant. Be the person who can help not the person who always needs help. Isn't that great? And rejoice in him today. And uh, we pray for many of you daily. And may we all humble ourselves before God and focus on having compassion on others and trying to help them. That's what we're about. That's what we're trying to do. And so I encourage you today. I encourage you to uh, realize the importance of walking with God and having a real relationship with him. A real, intimate, personal, and passionate relationship with the Savior can be yours. Have a great day. God bless you. And thank you for watching today. And we're glad for the YouTube channel. Tell your friends about it. And we encourage everybody to subscribe so we can be helpful to others. May God bless you today.